Hey, what's up guys? This is your boy Days. Check out raffletrades.com. Select the skins you don't want and then select the skins you do want. Hit trade and a trade offer is gonna come within 30 seconds. Once the trade offer comes, confirm it, accept it, and it's as easy as that. So raffletrades.com, check it out. The link is in the description below. Hey, what's up guys? This is your boy Days. And in this YouTube video, we're gonna show you how to hold Beyond Mirage from MSL and Shroud's point of view. And I'm gonna give a little bit of constructive criticism to both of them, but I think this is gonna have a lot of good information that could really help you on that side of the map if you find yourself playing there. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to look at the vast differences in play styles that each of these players uh, possesses and what they can learn from each other. So the interesting thing that we're we're going to see is that msl the lesser mechanically gifted and skilled player plays a much more aggressive play style and, and oftentimes puts his team in a really good position to win the round maybe making it 4v5 and msl really battles the person when they work b by himself like if jw is working against them which we're going to look at in the demo he fights him and he kills him and makes his team 4v5 and and generally if you're a really good team you can almost always leverage that 4v5 into a round win you know 80 plus percent of the time uh, and north is a very good team so the first thing i'm just going to show you is really simply the pre-smoke that msl throws if he is going to pre-smoke um he varies it up sometimes he pre-molotov sometimes he pre-smokes sometimes he pre-nades and sometimes he doesn't use any nades and just simply jump spots but this pre-smoke he goes to the left he lines it up very very quickly and i took a giazzo of it so if you guys want to know how to do this i'll show you and it'll be in the description below so next here, we're going to show how MSL pushes B. Um, he's playing against Fnatic, who sends JWB, who's like a bully, right? JW is like the biggest bully in Counter-Strike, right? I've been victimized by him. Freakazoid could learn a lot from this man on how to bully. Um, no, I'm just playing, but he really can work a site 1v1 where you're not a lot of the time supposed to work and and msl really gets the better of jw um consistently so you're gonna see here this is how he likes to push he throws a pre molotov he can get close his teammate flashes for him and then he throws a flash that jw has to blind get you know get blind from and he can kind of peek with it at the same time and this is how he likes to push b and what I was saying earlier is that if Shroud incorporated just like a like a push like this every once in a while, well timed and a half, um, he could m definitely make it four v five and you know win his team the round. Now, what's going to counter that push? Well. Uh, you could definitely get countered by it if there's maybe an opera right here and he could kill you while you're pushing. Um, but that's really it. And even then, there's a Molotov. The smoke Molotov and whatnot is really covering him. And, and he will probably miss the shot because he's really going across it quick, right? Um, after he throws that flash, just kind of flying around the corner. And with that Molotov cover, it's going to be a very difficult shot. And that's really like the only way, right? If there's an opera and he's just holding the crack, worst case scenario, he probably gets legged, you know, or, or hit for about 60. So it's pretty low risk and high reward, right? Look, if he gets here and he doesn't see anybody, he still has a smoke. He could smoke it out, and then he could either play the smoke or he could fall back and really give himself a lot of room to work with. Um, so pretty low risk push, and I think, again, if Shroud does something like this, a couple, couple rounds a half, he could he could really improve his B play. And we'll look at Shroud later, but for now, we're just going to take a look at, at MSL. So again, JW is going to fight him and battle him, and again, MSL is going to play relatively aggressive on it. This is something that you're not really going to see... Um, shroud do when we switch to him um he throws the pre-smoke and this is very intelligent of him he kind of botches the nade a little bit i think he throws a little bit too far but if you throw that pre-smoke and anybody's working b oftentimes they're just going to get into like this corner or here and just kind of chill a little bit because that way less likely for them to get spammed through the smoke and then they can kind of work it right so jw in my opinion kind of outplays them here um msl is throwing this flash and jw kind of makes a little bit of noise to kind of like bait it out i think after that flash happens and then msl flash peaks and he's just holding this pixel and jw actually probably should get the kill here uh, but msl uh, kind of just out aims him and uh jw doesn't really react in time wasn't ready for it but that's a very aggressive way of holding b like that's a way where he's he's anticipating that he's going to be in some type of a 1v1 battle and he's going to fight that person and you know more often than not he gets the kill so again, we're going to see MSL kind of just bully JW. Um, he's going to mix up his nades. He's not going to pre-smoke this time. He's going to Molotov. JW has to be worried about some type of a rush. And then bam, throws a nice direct nade on him. Does 55 damage before anything even happens. And then once again, not afraid to really get aggressive and just peek. He catches JW off guard. His teammate throws a flash and he peeks. The flash wasn't even that great. Um, I think if JW was uh, hiding here, it, it probably wouldn't have gotten him. 
uh, but maybe it would have. And then MSL bullies him, pushes him, and gets the kill again. So MSL getting the better of JW, consistently killing him. You know, again, putting his team in position. Okay, now we're gonna look at a bit of a misplay from MSL. Um, one thing that he's he he's not doing here is recognizing what is going on at the other side of the map. And now this is a chaotic scenario. This is a chaotic situation. Um, he throws a pre-smoke, but look what's going on at the other side of the map. There's no noise being made as teased. There might be like one smoke somewhere, but four guys just go be right away, basically. They might throw like a top mid smoke or something like that. And they just group up and they're just gonna throw two flashes, one over, one through the smoke, and jump through it now whenever you're a b player or an a player on mirage if especially verse four spies or anything like that if no noise is made on the other side of the map they didn't do any type of mid control nobody's peeking middle you know nobody's running underpass that the cat player hears um you know no no smokes or anybody's peeking at a uh, very often it's going to be either a b explode or contact b strat or jumping through the smoke or some type of an a exec okay or a scrim strat now what does that mean that means that msl should probably be a little bit back more you don't want to be in the situation versus tech nines you want to have your molotov ready and you want to understand the situation that you're dealing with um and cajun b actually over a catwalk probably shouldn't be nearly as uh, as aggressive um and you might want to get you know a little bit more more information at B because again if they don't make any noise top mid they don't make any noise on the other side of the map that that's a that's a tell that's a very telling sign that it could be some type of a B explode or an A explode and generally if you're a cat player you kind of want to lean over a little bit and, and give that B guy some help and MSL at the same time I think needs to play a little bit more passive in the scenario and utilize his Molotov so we're going to see that he's here as we play the clip flash comes through the smoke and a flash comes over and he gets blind gets one and dies and that's just not good enough when, when you're at the b site i know cajun b got one and stays alive but the way this round is going to play out you know you give fanatic players you know room to play with and i i, I mean you get an olafmeister close with the tech nine and these are the rounds that fanatic wins you know and, and you're giving them an opportunity to win by playing aggressive so in this clip we're going to see msl and one thing that you're going to see a big difference in the two of msl and shroud is that msl consistently jump spots if you watch any of these demos he jump spots constantly and he gets punished for it once in this demo zero hits him with a nice headshot but that was really the only instance that i saw him get punished at so he's he's willing to take that risk that you know he gets that early information and in turn you know risk a slight chance that they might headshot him you know while he is jump spotting um, but in this round he gets kind of bullied by zero and bondic he does a really good nade that does a lot of damage but once he gets inside this position where he gets pushed back here i think he needs to take the decision to fall back and get in a more comfortable spot if you watch shroud he really excels at areas like the back left pillar or right here and msl sometimes gets caught kind of trying to regress or being too aggressive in these scenarios and i think if he has a fallback spot that he's very very confident in he could have a great mix of being aggressive and fighting and then also when he needs to playing more back and being really good in these scenarios because it's really tough to to play like a spot like this because it's such a chaotic environment where they can come to your left they could jump down here get out here freely wide peak you like so um you have to worry about somebody still in the in the window so you can't really move too forward or go too far left if they drop out to the van this this angle is like killer right if you peek any type of side like this so in those chaotic situations i think he just needs one fallback spot that he gets comfortable in maybe come here bounce a flash off the wall and like peek like this or play like here like shroud does once he does get pushed back and not take those risks um by getting caught out in the in the open and getting bullied by some of these players so I want to show you guys what I was talking about before about playing properly in these scenarios where nothing is happening on the other side of the map. Um, I know this is just like a, one guy really fighting him at B here, but there's nothing really happening at A. These players are silent and he waits and he waits and he's holding the left side of the smoke, you know, and, and he's playing this aggro, which is completely fine, even if they have five people there because he could just, you know, hold mouse one. And then right when the smoke's dissipating, he throws a Molotov. And that's what you want to do, because when nothing's happening on either side of the map, it's very telling that he could be like a B player or something like that. And now that he's in this position, his teammate actually comes over from market um, 
and, and this is a great position to be in with that counter flash out when you have somebody kind of spotting for you and helping you out and that's kind of I, I know there wasn't five people rushing them but that's what you want to do when there's no noise on the left side of, or towards b there's no noise towards middle there's no tor nades towards a that's how you want to play against it because i'm telling you so many so many times people are going to do what fanatic did to them and they're just going to execute through that smoke right when it's dissipating and try to take control and win the round so you want to be up front on that smoke you don't want to be playing reactionary to it you want to be up front on it and then right when it's dissipating if you could throw like a well-timed nade you could single-handedly crush that round just with that well-timed nade now let's take another example of when he's playing up on the smoke or not playing up on the smoke and they kind of bust through it so look at their setup they're not really doing anything towards middle not doing anything towards a so what do you have you still have rubino here kind of with him um but but you know he only has an ump right but he does have a nice molotov that he could really use to help this push now you're gonna see even though he's here he's not playing up on the smoke right when they execute he kind of moves and he fumbles his nades a little bit and if he would have got that molotov off as the smoke was dissipating like he did before that wouldn't have happened and when you play really aggressively like he is he really needs to be on point with his timings so had he been playing aggressive on the smoke saw right when it was going to dissipate and toss that molly he probably wins that round pretty easily right because he's just going to stomp on that push right away this guy's going to be stuck here this guy's going to be stuck here he's probably going to peek a little bit and see like four of them and they're probably not going to hit him because they're jumping backwards from the molotov um and then all of a sudden the round's probably going to be over just because they're going to have that information that there's foreign halls and again you have that information that there's foreign halls they can't push maybe one guy pushes through the molly which happens like all the time in scenarios like that rubino and him kill him because they get that early spot he's running through the molly and you know he plays it that way but instead he doesn't see any info on any other side of the map they're not making noise anywhere else and he kind of just lets them execute without him throwing that nade as the smoke is dissipating and he's not playing up on that smoke to see when the smoke is dissipating so i think if he plays up on the smoke uses that proper molly and nade timing for when it's dissipating i think he holds that almost every single time whether he has an ump or even like a five seven just because of how much information it's going to give his team and just for good measure, let's take a look at how they actually force over time because they do end up winning this game and they win it off yet another push, which seems to work almost every single time that they do it. I hadn't seen it in any of the demos that I watched them fail it once. So MSL gets position. He's with Rubino. And even though he goes one for one here, uh, it's really easy trade kills for Rubino. As you're going to see, he gets one. This guy's going to come around the corner. He gets another 4v2. And Rubino smartly falls back and, you know, lives with his life intact and the information that Psycho is B. And he might even know that the bomb's there. Okay, guys. So before we look at the demo, uh, I'm first going to go in the server and kind of show you what Shroud likes to do real fast. You're not going to see Shroud jump spot very much unless he has that Molotov up that he likes to throw, you know, even if it's just like a pre Molly, um, he'll just come up, throw it real quick like so. And then jump spot while the Molly's up. And then if he really wants to jump spot, he actually usually accompanies with a, with a, a flashbang and he goes like this and he throws it. And then he jump spots and he gets that information with zero risk of getting killed. Um, having said that, I don't really like the way Shroud utilizes his nades. I think they could be much better utilized to, uh, you know, maybe get aggressive at, at times or mask aggression or even just saving them for a retake at A. Since he really doesn't utilize them very well, in my opinion, besides maybe to, you know, delay the team, uh, the enemy team. If he smokes, he usually goes back to this thing right here and then aims at that light bulb. So he kind of gives them access to these positions like so. But if they're back here, they're kind of stuck behind the smoke and they can't really do anything right unless they want to go through a smoke. And he usually doesn't even challenge that much when he has that smoke up, but he kind of just does it maybe to delay them or whatever. And that's usually the smoke you'll see him throw. But that's not really the important part of how Shroud plays B. The important part of how Shroud plays B is him simply spotting at angles that Shroud is going to be very consistent at and knows how to react to every single time that any type of a push or execute comes. He generally spots from mid site. This is the spot you're going to see him play more often than not. The second most uh, used spot by him 
is getting up here like so and using that and the third most used spot is spotting back here and giving them a lot of room to actually you know peek the windows and whatnot and get close and spots here and then he could play these pillars or you know back here like this and they're all very good angles for shroudy because he's so good in these chaotic environments where people are pushing him and trying to kill him um, if he still has a smoke and he's back here a lot of the time you'll see him smoke like this or He'll smoke like this, which is actually a really neat idea because this is like the most problematic spot for people to, to retake verse, right? Is this area because they could peek catwalk and kill that guy. They can kind of peek towards market and they could, you know, have a place to hide from if they want to peek site as well, like so. But if he throws that smoke, he kind of, you know, takes away that, that entire area of the map from his, from, from, you know, the enemy team. And it also makes it a lot easier on his teammates. Right. And, and, you know, puts him a little bit towards safety. So that's generally how he plays it. Now let's take, uh, uh, some clips and look at him doing it in live action. So in this round versus Renegade, Shroud starts out with a pre-molly. There's only one player in middle and there's still, a, I'm sure, automatic skadoodle and nothing kind of call that. And that kind of gives the information to Shroud. And, and even whether there's one player or four players, you know, coming towards B, Shroud's never going to get caught off guard because he simply doesn't play aggressive enough to ever be, you know, out of position or anything like that. So he's always in position to, to really fight these guys at B, never gets caught off guard or surprised. There's the smoke that I was talking about. And although he doesn't get any kills here, um, he does 100 damage, um, he stays alive, and everybody's looking at him, and it kind of makes Gauze job and Automatic's job on Cat and, and Market really easy. And Cloud9 actually reacts to that very, very nicely, right? They go and they see that there's only one person middle so what do they do they're like immediately okay it's either going to be a b push or some type of an a, a push and they kind of lean uh, automatic you know holding catwalk but he could also have a quick b rotate and skidoodle rotates to the market to really shut that down so this round there's not anything to show because he doesn't really see any action but i just kind of want to show you what he would do in case something happened and how he kind of reacts to things you see he doesn't jump spot at all he's not worried about that he's actually keeping a smoke this round a lot of the time he might use it earlier in the situation um his teammate kind of flashes I believe and he's just spotting 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 and then as soon as virtus pro makes any noise they throw some things over he's spotting he gets blind so he falls back throws that smoke i was talking about and gets to another spot that he can kind of spot from um and 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 again he plays like almost no risk right he's never going to get killed earlier or anything like that but he's also never going to really put his team up 4v5 and take what i believe especially for somebody with stroud's skill and mechanical skill uh you know an advantageous gun battle okay so i think this is a really good representation of, of how shroud plays b in this round um, he goes B right away with automatic and automatic actually pre molotovs it usually Shroud would do it himself He throws the flash I was talking about to jump spot um, Throws the smoke gets that down Sorry automatic doesn't pre molotov it he throws it when Shroud throws a smoke and it kind of you know misses it But anyways here he spots from this spot he gets a little antsy is like you know what I'm gonna play a little bit more back so once nades kind of start coming out close and flashes, he falls back to this spot, which is another spot that he likes to play, like I said before. Kills two, and you know what? If this Molotov would have landed properly, where it landed right when they were jumping out of the window, this would have been like a clean round where they probably win with four alive because that would have put Neo completely out of position. When Shroud peaked, he probably would have died to automatic um, running inside that Molotov you know, and, and away from him. And instead of being a 3v1, Shroud's probably alive here, and it's like a 4v1 type round. Um, and Shroud kind of, you know, missing out the Molotov loses the death. But you see how well he plays it in those scenarios, right? He never gets caught off guard or anything like that. And that's really the strength of his, right? But again, what we're lacking from Shroud is any type of early round aggression where somebody's trying to fight him. Like my cat is fighting me right now. Kitty down. And really, you know, making it 4v5 or something like that. And again, I think if Shroud just takes that one molly push while he throws that molly anyways and just sometimes flashes and pushes it, you know, at the right time when he's playing against a Fnatic, he could just kill JW in an important round when he's trying to 1v1 him and just win Cloud9, you know, potentially a huge round, you know, and, you know, really propel them in a half, you know, depending on the circumstances. So this round here versus FaZe, I think, kind of shows the whole package of what Shroud's doing. Um... We see the flash. After the flash, the jump spot comes out. We see him consistently play the same position. 
Um, we see the molly, and then since he mollies, he's comfortable jump spotting. Not really worried about getting headshot in that position. And then this is like the spot he normally plays once again to, to you know, spot from. And he throws the smoke, goes back in the spot, and then when the push comes, um, you know, he does a good job, kills one, stays alive. Again, makes it pretty easy on his team. A little bit of an oversight peeking there. Uh, not really needed. Actually gives Alu two kills like that. Gets him the bomb down and, you know, two unnecessary deaths in my opinion. But still, that's kind of what he does, right? You're not going to, you're not going to gay him. He, in my opinion, is using his utility like too defensively. I think a lot of it's kind of unnecessary because that utility is really important if he wants to do a retake. And a lot of the time, the spotting that he's doing. So see, my gripe is that he does that every time. Every single time, no matter what, he's, he's doing that. Same type of, type of utility usage and same type of spotting. And he does that even if there's three people middle on T side. Like they're throwing a million mid nades and things like that. Even if people are like, here, you know, you're, his A player hears somebody hauls and there's nades, you know, lurk smoking A ramp and nades middle. I think that type of utility should really only be used under like a lot of pressure or if there's nothing ever happening on the other side of the map or a lot of the time it could be like a quick type of a B push. Um, so that's kind of my gripe with it, right? I think that Shroud, if he's playing like this, he really doesn't need to utilize all that utility. You know, he could just use one splash, then jump spot and use either his smoke or his Molotov and then that would make it a lot easier for when he is playing these spots where he's spotting to not only get a kill but then fall back and kind of secure the round after that first kill happens so all in all i hope that gives you guys a good grasp of how to hold b the advantages of playing aggressive and the disadvantages of it and the advantages of playing passive like shroud and the disadvantages of it and kind of the differences in play styles and i think it's a really interesting thing to look at i think if you could blend these two groups of players together in msl and shroud you'd have like the perfect b holder because they up get opportunistically a aggressive and kill that guy trying to bully them but you'd also have somebody who's super good at playing defensive and and you know reactionary um so i i think watching both these players though gives you a really good idea of really how to play this site and, and the options that you have the benefits towards it towards those options and kind of the disadvantages and risks associated with them as well um this has been dazed hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to uh, subscribe to the youtube and peace out